Hi, I'm Scott. And I'm Elsa. Welcome to Meaningful Travel. Now I'm really excited because this video is all about a town I've been living in for the last 10 years, so I know all the insider information. It is, of course, Bend, Oregon. Now it's only a town of about 100,000 people, but it is the hub of Central Oregon, which means, of course, good food, great entertainment, and awesome beer, and like 285 to 300 days of sunshine a year. Bend is known for its outdoor recreation and natural beauty. The mountains around Bend get about 30 feet of snow per year, which means there's so much to do in the winter. There's cross-country skiing, downhill skiing, snowboarding, snowmobiling, snowshoeing, and you can even go ice skating at the pavilion downtown. I grew up in a small town. I love the feel of downtown Bend. There are cute shops, so many great places to eat, those craft beverages, and downtown Bend is just beautiful. There's trees all around Bend, and you'll also see deer here and there. We are headed to the brewery where all the locals go for great food and some of the best beer in town. Welcome to Bevel Craft Brewing. My name is Justin Selmer. I'm one of the partners here at Bevel Craft Brewing. Behind this mural is our production area. Uh, and then we have a small tap room inside and this nice large patio to enjoy these wonderful Central Oregon winter days. Bevel came into being when two professional disc golfers fell in love. Nate and Val, my partners, uh, uh, we were all professional disc golfers. They are seven-time world champions between the two of them. I'm a one-time state champion, so it's a little better in my opinion. Uh, but we all met out and uh, through a mutual friend, fell in love with craft beer individually and came together over our love for that. And uh, here we are a few years later and business is going great. And while they met over the flight of a disc, it's the flight of beer that really makes Bevel stand out. So uh, on our flights, because we all did meet playing disc golf, we definitely wanted to have that be a part of what we do with our flights. So we took a Frisbee and we served five five ounce pours, cut right into that, right into that Frisbee and bring it out to your table. But full confession, I didn't just bring Elsa here for the beer. I brought her here for one of the creme de la creme of food cart indulgences. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Ina Poke Nachos. Ahi tuna served over fried wontons with a house-made sriracha sauce and a creamy wasabi aioli all colliding in a blissful mashup with our hot beverages in a way that can only be described as just east of heaven. God, I love Bend. Bend is a very accepting community of craft beer. Uh, there are currently, I believe, 24 craft breweries here in Central Oregon with only 100,000 people. So that puts us right at the top for most breweries per capita in the country. Um, great water, great community, great people uh, equals great beer. We are headed to the brewery that may have the best view in town. All right. Now Elsa's a craft beer fan, as am I, and we both share a fondness for IPAs. So I decided to introduce her to my friend who is a maker of one of the better IPAs in Bend, okay. the owner of yeah, Crux Fermentation you. Project, Larry Sidor. Yeah. You met Elsa? Yep, yes. met Elsa. Glad to meet you. Is there anything that you would want people who love Bud and Coors to know about craft beer? If, if what, what are they missing out on? <laughs> oh, that's a great question. So, so uh, disclaimer, Miller, Coors, Bud, they make very high quality bland beer. You know, and so it's, it's, it's the milk toast, the white bread of, of beer. And there is so much flavor that craft offers that they don't and that's the that's the that that that's my two cents there I mean when I I started brewing with the uh, Olympia Brewing Company they they were in fact a craft brewery I mean they even though they were a mass brewery but one of the the worst days in my life is when we were having a strategic uh, planning meeting and the um, marketing guys were saying, Larry, the closer you can make beer to water, the more we can sell. Really? Oh, it killed me. It absolutely killed me. And, and it really, I mean, that was the, the Miller Lite, the taste great, less filling days in which they were dumbing down beer. They were making 
you know, beer as close to water as they possibly could and using athletes to, to sell it. So, you know, good for them. Since beer flights are our focus this time out, we put together a list of samplers from stouts to a smoked grapefruit flavored fruit beer, and Larry shared how it's his wife who is one of his better consultants when it comes to beer. Well, it's good to hear that women are enjoying your beers too. Do you think that that's something that's changing with the craft beers where there are more, there's more variety? Oh, absolutely. I have, um, I have been challenged a few hundred times while I was working down here brewing beer and uh, a woman would come in and said, well, I don't like beer. And I'd go like, I'll bet you I can find something you like. And it is, every, I don't think I've ever failed of finding a beer that a lady doesn't like. You know, whether it's a Saison or it's, um, you know, uh, some of the fruited beers we have or whatever. I mean, it is, uh, the, 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 the moniker of make it as close to water as possible is gone. So I think that, uh, you know, very, very interesting beers uh, people will enjoy. Our flight is ready and it's time for Larry to tell us why you, as a craft beer fan, need to put Bend on the top of your to-do list. So can you tell me about the, the craft beer scene in Bend? Oh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I just, I, I'm so thrilled with the, the craft scene in Bend. Um, one of the things that I've done in the past is um, go to, uh, to Burton on Pond Trent in England. And it, it, at one time, was the world producer of IPA. I mean, they made more barrels of beer than any other place in the world. And they have an ale trail there. And so I, I went on the ale trail, and it was pretty funky. And, uh, and then you come back to Bend, and we've got a fantastic ale trail going through all the different breweries and whatever. So, I mean, the, the scene in, in Bend is, is just, it's fantastic. I can't, can't say enough good about it. I mean, we have a whole variety of breweries. Uh, you know, you've got all the, you know, the big guy, the second guy in town to Shoots Brewery to, you know, the folks almost brewing in a garage. So you get a lot of uh, most interesting beers you can, you can try and sample. Well, should we do a flight? Yeah, let's do a flight. Let's do a flight. Let's do a flight. Okay. All right. <laughs> Besides the local brew pub, Crux can be found on shelves and in pubs throughout Oregon and Washington, in Idaho around Boise, and the Bay Area and Humboldt County in California. And if you look really hard, you may just find them on your next trip to Japan or the Netherlands. We are headed for Mount Bachelor, one of the crown jewels of the Pacific Northwest ski scene. What are your thoughts? I'm excited to ski after three years. Scott brought his ski gear from home, but I don't currently own ski equipment, so I decided to rent. The week before we went to Mount Bachelor, I went online. I answered the questions, filled out the forms, and got a QR code. When we got to the rental shop, all I had to do was show the QR code, go up on the stage-like platform for boot fitting, which took only about two minutes, and then head over and get my skis, poles, and helmet, and I was ready to hit the slope. Ah, uh, but wait, we of course had a bunch of gear with us, so we thought, well, maybe we should get a locker. It was 20 bucks for a locker, but it was a large locker, and they do take credit cards and debit cards, which helps a lot, and of course, it does give you some peace of mind so you don't have to go back to your car midday. Ready to kick some bootay. I am. All right. Mount Bachelor has about 4,300 acres of accessible terrain, and it lies in the rain shadow of the Cascades, so it's a much drier snow than most of the ski areas in the Northwest, and bluebird days are fairly common. Whoa. <laughs> having fun? I am having fun. Mount Bachelor is the sixth largest ski area in the United States, and it has one of the longest ski seasons in the country. Quite often, it's open from Thanksgiving all the way through Memorial Day. We were there on such a beautiful day. We went on a Friday, which was probably a good thing because there weren't as many people on the chairlifts and there weren't as many people on the slopes. It was wonderful to have a run to ourselves. And while the food selection was okay, they did at least have a lot of our favorites. Including nachos and IPA, of course. 
these were pulled pork nachos, piled high. And of course, Bend is kind of known as Craft Beer City USA, so of course the selection of hop beverages was pretty darn impressive. It was a really nice place to take a break during the dog days of winter. After so many years away, I was in heaven, and the views cannot be beat. Mount Bachelor is a higher-end destination. You'll have high-speed chairlifts and you'll have great services, but you'll also pay more for your lift ticket. Sadly, unless you have an RV, you won't be sleeping up at the mountain, so we do recommend that you make lodging reservations either at Bend or Sun River. So to sum up, let's talk about what was great and what was not, not so great. great. First great, of course, the snow. This is some of the driest snow you'll find in the entire Pacific Northwest. Number two, the beauty. 360 degree views of volcanic peaks. They surround you all day long. And of course, number three, it's proximity to my town. As far as not so great, two things. First of all, the prices, the lift ticket was more than $100. And then as far as rentals, which I rented, that's something you're gonna to wanna to budget. And then also those $20 lockers. The second thing is lodging. Unless you have an RV, you're not going to be staying up at the mountain. So fortunately, Bend is not that far away. Just plan that you're going to stay there. We're headed through the town of Sisters to the Hoodoo Ski Area to get us some coveted night skiing. The rental process at Mount Bachelor blew me away. So efficient, up-to-date technology. So when we got to Hoodoo, it reminded me of renting equipment back in the day. Nothing wrong with that. I did my paperwork, I got my boots, I got my skis and poles. There are no helmets, you cannot rent a helmet. Uh, funny story, when I was handed my skis, I thought they looked a little short for me, and so I commented to the employee. He reminded me that it was no longer the 1980s and I would be fine. I was fine, it's more about how they perform than how they look. Now, Hoodoo is about an hour outside of Bend and the snow's not quite as dry as Mount Bachelor, but the views are equally as stunning. I, I predict excellent snow and a beautiful scenery. And a really hot guy. It's absolutely hot. Throughout the day, we had the opportunity to ride the chairlift with locals who gave us great advice on where and when to ski on the mountain and also what to eat when we took a break. Woof, 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 woof. One of the best tips we got though was uh, to get the chair to the top of the mountain right before it closes. So we got a 360 degree view of the sunset right before heading to the lodge to get a little bite to eat. And what better way to carbo load for those precious night runs than to head down to the lounge for... Nachos and pints, of course. Yeah, another plate of pulled pork nachos, a few bucks cheaper than Mount Bachelor and like 50% larger. This was a treat. Being in the bar at Hoodoo reminded me of my college days in Boulder. It was a relaxed, laid back feel, and it was fun to see the lift operators gathered around a long table for a beer at the end of the day. But of course, the main reason we came here was for the night skiing, and Elsa took the opportunity to wax poetic. What's your prediction? <laughs> Dark, uh, with spots of light. Oh, I like it. Uh -huh. <laughs> If you haven't tried night skiing, I recommend you try it. It can feel magical. Fewer people on the lifts, fewer people on the slopes, and there's just this level of intimacy with the mountain. And believe it or not, on this evening, the snow actually got better as things got colder. And that's one thing to keep in mind with night skiing is sometimes the weather can be your best friend or your biggest challenge, because sometimes the wind can really howl and the ice can be a little gnarly. So to sum up, let's talk again about what was great and what was not, not so, so great. great. First thing, the vibe. Hoodoo is very much a local style hill. It's very relaxed. You're gonna have a great time. Number two, the beauty. Bachelor had great views, but so does Hoodoo. There are 360 degrees of volcanic peaks all the way around you. And finally, the entertainment. Believe it or not, they have live music every Friday night so you can get your ski on and you can get your party on. What was not so great is two things. First of all, parking. Hoodoo just is a smaller ski area and there isn't such a large parking lot. 
you may find yourself parking as much as half a mile away and then packing your ski stuff in. The second one is helmets. People are used to wearing helmets, but Hoodoo does not rent them. If you want a helmet, you're going to either need to bring it or you're going to need to buy it in the shop. Otherwise, you're going without. We're looking for our next travel destination. Help us out by leaving a comment with your recommendations. Also, give us a thumbs up. We'd love it if you'd subscribe. And of course, the best thing you can do to help us out is to share this video with your friends. And speaking of videos, right about now, there should be some other videos showing up that'll help you deep dive into more meaningful travel.